Welcome to the 2018 Rent Event, proudly brought to you by Ray White. Tonight's a wonderful opportunity for us to help educate landlords in New Zealand around all the changes that are occurring in our industry. I'm Brian Greer, CEO of Loan Market in New Zealand. We're the largest mortgage brokerage in the country, settling over $3 billion a year in home loans and investment loans. We deal with all the major banks in New Zealand and we work really closely with Ray White and their property managers. You would argue that the biggest cost of your investment is the financing cost. What we'd like to do tonight is help you understand that a little better and help you optimise the return on your investment. There's three key areas that we're going to look at. One is available funding, because that's been an ever-changing landscape. Number two, we'll look at what's happening with interest rates. We can't do a segment like this without touching on that. Number three, we'll focus on what for mine is the most important part, and that's the advice piece. Let's start with available funding. It's an area that's become quite restrictive over the last couple of years driven by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, who imposed some restrictions on the trading banks. In relation to investment lending, two years ago, they dictated that no more than 60% of the purchase price of a property was able to be funded. A year ago, they loosened that to 65%, still quite restrictive, really designed to try and slow the property market down. Hence, if you're looking to fund yourself into investment property, you either need to have a substantial deposit or equity in other property to support this. We've got some options just in a little while that'll help ease that burden for you. Right now, I'd like to talk about interest only lending. As a landlord, many of you will have your funding on interest only, and that is the right thing for investment lending in many instances. However, the Reserve Bank have also placed some restrictions on the trading banks in relation to the capital they must hold for investment lending or interest only lending. Essentially, if they were funding you into a home loan, for every dollar they lend, they need to keep a dollar 20 in the bank. If it's for investment use or interest only purposes, for every dollar they lend, they need to keep $1.30 in the bank. What they do to accommodate that is it drives the price up. So when you see interest rates of around 4% for a home loan, you tend to see that that's at about 4.15, 4.2 for investment lending. Also, it means that banks by and large will not fund past five years for interest only. Now, when your interest only period comes up for renewal, you might find the banks quite restrictive and not wanting to renew that. That's where we come in. We can move that money around, ensuring number one, best price, and number two, that you're maintaining that interest only period. Now we talked before about needing to have 35% equity or deposit to fund yourself into investment property. There are a range of excellent non-bank options in New Zealand that can fund you in with just 20% deposit. That can be on a standalone basis, or when you cross support that with your owner occupied home, meaning that we can actually fund that with still an interest rate in the fours. Very competitive, so there are some great solutions there. Right, let's look at interest rates. Essentially in New Zealand, about 80% of all lending is done on fixed rates. Now what you may not be aware is that a large portion of that fixed rate lending is funded through the capital markets in the US and Europe. So what we've got happening in the interest rate environment in New Zealand at the moment is a bit of a tug of war. So we've got on one hand, the capital markets in the US and Europe, which have interest rates that have never been lower. And that's holding and even driving interest rates slightly down. Hence, we're seeing rates in that very, very low 4% bracket. On the other side of the rope, we've got the trading banks in New Zealand and the Reserve Bank. And essentially what's occurring there is that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, as mentioned earlier, are requiring the banks to hold more funds for all the investment lending. So banks need more money. Hence, there's a war going on around investments, deposits. And how do they get more deposits? They have to put the interest rates up. So on one side, we've got the capital markets in the US and Europe driving rates down. And on the other side, we've got the trading banks in New Zealand trying to raise money. It's a tug of war that the capital markets in the US and Europe are winning slowly at the moment. Hence, rates are very, very low. But it'd be worth talking to your advisor. We're seeing interest rates in the investment space, mid fours, being able to lock that down for three years. Now, that could be very attractive for an investment funding option. And I just encourage you to maybe talk to your loan market advisor as to What's the best option for you? Now for me, the most important part is the advice piece. We see time and again, investors with their debt structured the wrong way. If you think about investment debt being tax deductible and owner occupied debt not being tax deductible. That means if you currently have a house and you still have some funding against it for the purchase of that property, but you're buying an investment property, we would strongly encourage you to have your investment lending on interest only as the interest is tax deductible. So we don't want to reduce that debt 
until our home loan is repaid in full. It can often feel strange for consumers to not be reducing debt, but if you imagine for a moment you've got a total of $700,000 debt and 500,000 of it is investment and 200,000 of it is not. We want to focus on reducing that $200,000 first. Once it gets to zero, sure, then we focus on repaying our investment debt. Now the other area in the advice piece is borrowing entity. Making sure you've got your funding in the appropriate entity. As an example, if you're buying an investment property and the missus of the house earns $150,000 and the mister of the house earns $50,000, there's a larger portion of tax deductibility on missus income. Hence, the lending would be better in missus name. Also, you may want to consider a company structure to purchase the property in. You definitely need to seek accounting advice because it's different from client to client. But making sure you've got the borrowing and the ownership of that property in the right entity is really important. So please do talk to your accountant. Now just wrapping up the advice piece, another thing that we see often is somebody that owns a home, they love the property, but they've outgrown it and they're upgrading. They decide not to sell their house and they're going to turn it into an investment property. However, they've actually paid a big portion of the debt down. Now if they then go and purchase the owner-occupied home and fund the full purchase of that from the bank, the debt will not be tax deductible. What we can do to change that around is sell the current owner-occupied home to a company that you own and are the shareholder of. We then 100% fund that and use that money to help fund the owner-occupied purchase, effectively turning the same debt into a tax-deductible debt versus not. But please, talk to your accountant because this can make all the difference to your investment and its tax deductibility. The other three key areas that we wanted to cover off tonight, I'd just like to emphasise that the return on your investment is critical. Making sure you've got your debt set up the right way, making sure you've got it at best price, will make all the difference. We work really closely with Ray White and their property managers, and one of the real key advantages that they bring to the table is introducing us to make sure you are optimising the return on your investment. Why should you use us? Well, number one, we'll make sure you can borrow that maximum amount that you want to borrow. You could be sitting on equity that will allow you to continue to grow your portfolio today. Number two, we'll keep the banks honest. We will negotiate the absolute best terms for you. And number three, we'll make sure that we give you the appropriate advice so your debt is structured the right way. I hope you got some gems out of tonight. I'd just like to congratulate you for taking some time to come along, educate yourself, and hopefully this will help you optimise the return on your investment.